Let's talk quickly about downgrading a tourniquet. Understand that conventional wisdom is that you never lose a tourniquet once you put it on there. I think it's also important to understand that that is for most situations when you have EMS available, when an ambulance is coming to get you or search and rescue is coming to get you uh, within a known time period, and you're going to get to a higher medical care facility that's gonna be able to take this off more safely. It's also in the context of the military where you have medevac that's usually within a couple of hours. Um, for a remote wilderness emergency, when you don't have medevac available, when you don't have EMS available, you don't know how long this tourniquet's gonna to be on. So it is worth trying to downgrade this to a intervention that doesn't cause loss of tissue after a certain amount of time. So with that said, the TCCC standard is every tourniquet that we place on, we're gonna to try to downgrade within the first two hours. And the same thing would apply to you in a remote wilderness emergency. If I place this tourniquet on, I'm going to attempt to downgrade this to wound packing and a pressure dressing to control this bleeding so that I can take this off and preserve this limb below that point. Again, within the first two hours, I wanna to try to do that. I may try to do that again up to six hours, but after six hours, you do not loosen the tourniquet. Don't take it off. Just leave it on there. You've kind of got what you got at that point. After six hours, the amount of necrosis that's happening in the tissue below that tourniquet, it's very dangerous to loosen that tourniquet and release all of those toxins that have built up into the rest of the system. And chances are, yes, you're still probably going to lose this limb. Can you go longer than six hours and not lose it? Possibly, but what you don't do is try to downgrade a tourniquet after six hours. So within the first two hours, give it a shot. Up until about six hours, you can try it again, but not after six hours, never ever after six hours. So. How do we downgrade it? Well, right now, this is what's controlling the bleeding and it's known to control the bleeding. And again, we're trying to prevent hypovolemia. So all the blood volume is precious. We don't wanna lose any of it, all right? So I'm not going to ever, this is another thing that's out there that you may have heard is periodically loosening the tourniquet to resupply the blood flow to the limb so that you can keep this on longer and preserve the tissue. What I'll say about that is this is either effective at controlling the bleeding or it's not. Uh, so this is either the reason you're not bleeding to death or it's not. If you loosen this periodically, all you're doing is allowing yourself to slowly bleed to death if this is what is, control the, is controlling the bleeding. So loosening a tourniquet every so often to allow blood flow back to the limb is not a thing. Don't do that. Uh, you'll just slowly exsanguinate, which is bleed to death. What you can do is leaving this in place because it's currently controlling the bleed is attempt to downgrade it. You can use a quick clot or you can use some regular compressed gauze or rolled gauze, whatever you've got to pack that wound, but you need to pack that wound as tightly as possible, just like we did before. And then whatever type of dressing you have to be able to use for a pressure dressing, you're gonna place that on next. In this case, I've got an Israeli. I'll go through this quickly because you guys have seen me do this before. Collapse that trigger bar over. Sorry, collapse that pressure bar over. Seal up both sides. Same principles apply. You're still tugging that pressure. and I've placed this on. Now from here, I've got this packed and I've got pressure on here. Now what I can do is release the pressure from the tourniquet to determine whether or not this wound packing and pressure dressing is effective. What I don't wanna do is take this completely off because if it's not effective, I'm just gonna go back to the tourniquet. I'm gonna release that pressure and I'm gonna monitor this to make sure that this is in fact controlling the bleeding. If it is controlling the bleeding, 
then I can either leave this on standby like it is now, or I can take it off. If this doesn't control the bleeding, then immediately go back to the tourniquet, crank it tight until the bleeding stops and there's no more distal pulse, and just satisfy yourself or convince yourself that this was not enough. This is what you actually need to control that bleeding. Again, you can try to do this up until the six hour mark uh, again, um, but never after the six hour point. So reasons you would never downgrade a tourniquet or attempt to downgrade a tourniquet, okay? If you or the person you are working on, a person you're with is showing signs and symptoms of shock. If they're in shock, do not try this because if they're in shock that means they're already hypovolemic they're already low volume it's not worth it's not worth the risk of losing this and losing any more volume whatsoever you also don't want to attempt to downgrade a tourniquet if this is an amputation or a partial amputation if it's a partial amputation chances are that limb can't be saved if it's a total amputation there's no limb to be saved so downgrading this to preserve tissue down here it doesn't really pass critical thinking, right? So that's a, another reason that you would not try to downgrade this. The other reason that you would never try to downgrade is if this is not effective and this is the only thing that is controlling that bleed, you keep this on. So those are the three things. Um, as far as hypovolemic shock, some of the things to watch for, for those that are very obvious signs and symptoms, an increased heart rate would be one, right? And by increased heart rate, I mean over 120 beats per minute. Uh, increased breathing rate, uh, more than 30 breaths per minute would be an increase in breathing rate. Either one of those things, I'm gonna suspect that the, the person that I'm with or myself is, is in some form of shock, most likely hemorrhagic shock in this case. Uh, altered mental status, uh, dizziness, confusion, uh, those are those are other signs that you may see and pallor like look at their skin tone uh, are they pallor means pale you know are they pale is the skin cool is it clammy as in kind of uh, kind of a sweatiness kind of a clammy skin those are all signs of possible shock and you want to treat for shock you don't want to bother with trying to downgrade this and lose any more volume so those are the reasons you would never try to downgrade the tourniquet but again if EMS is available or Medivac's available within the next couple of hours, there's no reason to even bother with that. But for our scenario with a remote wilderness emergency where you could be out there for days, it's worth giving it a shot.